begin with a word of prayer, can we? Father, we just thank you for this privilege this evening to be in your house. I pray, Lord, that every word that is spoken, every thought that is thought, every gesture is anointed by you. I pray, Lord, that you would lead, guide, and direct in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to do something tonight that I have never done before. And I'm getting pretty old. I've done a lot of things. Back in 1984, early 85, gave my life to the Lord. Lord began to deal with my life and turn my life upside down. And in the course of that, he gave me a favorite portion of Scripture. How many of you have a favorite portion of Scripture? Maybe it's one that the Lord impressed upon you like me. Maybe it's one that you just like it. And it's, you can use it in a lot of different directions in your life. But I have a favorite Scripture. Part of it's in the old and part of it's in the new. And I have never preached on it. I, I thought about that here a while back. I can't believe that these two Scriptures that God gave me, I believe God gave me, and put them together for my, my life, and I never in 20-some years sat down and wrote a sermon on them and preached on them, but I'm going to tonight. When I gave my life to the Lord, I was almost 35, a month of 30, being 35, and I had lived the last 15-plus years thinking that I had said no to the Holy Spirit one too many times, that used to be taught a lot, and that I would never have another opportunity to give my life to the Lord. But in October of, the latter part of October of 84, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Most of you have heard this testimony to some level, and at home, watching TV, and said, give your life to Jesus at your last chance. And he said it three times. And when I went to bed that night, I knew that I didn't dare go to sleep, that I, had, I, I couldn't go to sleep because I would never wake up. And I believe that today even more than ever before. And the Lord began to just flip my life upside down and turn it totally around. In January of 85, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In April the 13th, as my dad breathed his last breath, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and called me into ministry, and my life just kind of went crazy from that point on. But in the course of that, the Lord gave me two scriptures. One is in Jeremiah 33, 3, that says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not of. And the other one is in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. And the Lord has dealt with me over the years many, many, many times and taught me different things and new things. And I only have four points today. And I'm going to keep it tight and, and, and lack short in, in time, but I want us to look at these two scriptures this evening, and that's King James, by the way, and it says, call unto me. That's a command. That isn't if you have time. It isn't if nothing else is, is getting in your way. It isn't if you feel like it. He said, call unto me. How many of you know the most important thing you do as a believer is the time you spend talking to God? I'll say it again. How many of you know the most important thing you do as a believer is the time you spend talking to God and letting God talk to you? Can you say amen? I learn a lot more when I let God do the talking instead of me talking. How about you? But it's a command. In fact, it is such a command that God's word over and over and over and even songs that we sing and choruses that we sing it says, pray without ceasing. The low course says, God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. Everywhere you go and everywhere you look in, in God's word and, and, and in, in scripture and, and things going on around us as Christians, it tells us to spend some time with the Lord. 
We used to call it pouring out our heart or, or, or uh, letting the Lord deal with our hearts and our lives. And, and we need to make sure that we obey the command of talking to God. I remember back when I was working shift work, uh, and that, rotate, that shift work rotated. And I remember the first time that I didn't get off. I went to work at 3 o'clock, and I didn't get off until 3 in the morning, and I was tired. And I thought, well, I'll just go home and go to bed. I'd done that one day. And the Holy Spirit began to convict me. He said, Daryl, you didn't go to the church and pray. And so the next morning when I, got, when I went, got off work, I went to the church and prayed. I had another shift, and it started at 3 in the morning. It didn't get off until 3 in the afternoon. How many of you know that, that's a long enough day? And I knew by that time, he didn't have to tell me, he didn't have to impress it upon me that I needed to go and spend some time with him. Can I tell you, I don't care how tired you are. I don't care how long your day has been. I don't care what's been going on around you. We need to set aside some time to just spend it with the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, there was some of those mornings that I'd go into the old Phillipsburg church and I'd sit against the next wall, the back or the north wall rather, and I'd find myself waking up about 30, 40 minutes later and saying, Amen. Because I'd go to sleep. But I learned something. God honors effort. God honors our heart and our, the intent of our heart and what he's asking to do. Number two, he says, I will answer you. God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. How many of you have ever had a prayer that God answered? Oh, now, come on. I'm going to share one with you. I've been studying correspondence for four years. I got my certification at that point. And I got my license two years later. Still in the state of Kansas, still working for Tamco Asphalt Products. And the Lord kept urging us to, 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 to start sending resumes. Can I tell you something? It scared me to death. I'd never done that before. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to expect. But I'd done it. I sent my resume, made up a little simple resume and sent it to the district office. And uh, Brother Musgrove at that time started passing it around to different people. In one of my prayer sessions, I prayed this prayer. I said, Lord, I don't care where you send me. I don't care how big or how large. I don't care what the circumstances are. I don't care about any of the details, but you have got to give me a church that loves me because I can't handle one that doesn't. Can I tell you, we pastored in, the, in Nebraska, we pastored in Iowa, we pastored here in Kansas, we pastored as a, an associate in, in uh, Goodland. We was a 10-month interim in Hill City, and to this day, I have no horror stories to tell anybody. Because God answered my prayer. Not because I was the greatest pastor in the world or because I deserved their love, but because I prayed a prayer out of desperation. God, you've got to give me a church that loves me because I can't handle one that doesn't. How many of you have a prayer that you prayed in a similar situation and God intervened and, and, and provided for you in regard to that? I want you to know something. God answers prayer. He doesn't always answer it the way you expect him to. He doesn't always answer it the way you really would like for him to do. But God will always give an answer to your prayer. Can you say amen? He says, call unto me. The Lord wants to spend time with you and I. And I will answer thee. And I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not of. How many of you know great and mighty is the Lord our God? 
Great and mighty is, did you see how slick I worked that little song in there? Great and mighty is he. Can you, can I tell you this evening, my God is an awesome God. He does things exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that I could ever ask, think, dream, or imagine. Can you say amen? We need to understand that God not only answers our prayers, but he shows us great and mighty things in the, course, in the process, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. I'm guessing that every one of us in this room tonight has a story, a testimony, of the greatness, I said of the greatness of our God. God has, has done things for us and for me and for Jerry, for our family. He's kept us alive. He's kept us safe. We have food in our refrigerator and in our, clo in our clo well, probably some of the closets too, but in our, in our cupboards, we have clothes on our back. We have a vehicle or two to drive. We even have a toy or two. Mine happens to be green, but not everybody's. But God answers our prayers. Can I tell you, I have never earnestly prayed a prayer yet that God didn't give an answer to over a period of time. You see, he should have answered it yesterday for me. How about you? I mean, you, you, you know my thoughts, Lord, so I've already thought it. Why don't you just do it? But God is a God that he wants conversation with you and I. I don't understand that why a great, big, wonderful God wants to have a conversation with little old me. I don't even feel like I can, I can do a, a, a conversation that really makes sense sometimes. At least it doesn't always make sense to me. But God understands. And God reads between the lines in our praying. Can you say amen? Another prayer that I prayed, our son was getting out of high school. And he was kind of following in his father's footprints in the sense that he was rebelling and running from the Lord. And he had approached us and wanted to go to Kansas City. And I encouraged him to do it while he was single. But before Tim left, in my prayer time, I prayed this prayer. Lord, please don't let him run from you as long as I did. And I prayed it from the bottom of my heart. Interesting enough, it wasn't just a few months later. Literally just a few months and my wife got a phone call from her son, our son. And he said, by the way, Mom, I gave my life to the Lord today. Yes! I ran for 20 years or more. I'm going to tell you, if you think that God forgets to answer, he hasn't. Now, I'm thankful, even to this day, I'm thankful that God answered my prayer. And my son is living for the Lord and his family. I'm so grateful. But more than that, or equal to that, I'm thankful that I serve a God that hears and answers a hurting old dad's prayer and does something and answering it. Can you say amen? How many of you realize that when you're praying, 
especially it seems like when we're praying out of desperation or, or we're hurting or we're, we're, it's not just now I lay me down to sleep kind of prayer, but it's a, it's a prayer of uh, how many of you know the Lord feels that hurt or that loneliness or that heart of desperation in your life? Jumping over to Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. How many of you know the more you pray and the more you let God answer prayers in your life, the more you get to know him? Let me say that again. You really don't know who God really is until you let him answer a few of your heart-wrenching prayers. And we need to make sure that we let him answer those prayers for us. Can you say amen? amen? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Do you know the same power that resurrected Christ from the dead is the same power that's going to bring you out of a tomb? It's the same power of the Holy Spirit when you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's that same power that gives you guidance and direction and leading in your life every day. I want you to know something. We have the power. We don't have to walk around like we're weak and frail and can't get anything done and nothing's working right. I'm going to tell you something. God's on our side and he's powerful, all powerful God that we may know him through the answer of our prayers and the power of his resurrection. This one's a tough one for me. And the fellowship of his sufferings. I'm really not fond of suffering. I mean, probably the closest thing I've done to suffer is uh, maybe got lunch a half hour late or some little silly thing like that. I've been fortunate. I haven't had a lot of, a lot of uh, physical issues or emotional issues. Well, some people would argue that, but uh, and things in our life. But I haven't had to suffer a lot. The fellowship, like-minded in the fellowship of His suffering. Can I tell you? Jesus suffered everything that He suffered. for us and for our sake. And he wants us to be willing to suffer for his sake. Can you say amen? I look at in the Bible and I look at the, 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 the disciples and they suffered. Almost every one, all but one died from a crucifixion or, or a hanging or a beheading or, or something like that. I think there was only one out of the 12 that, that died a natural death. Is that, is that correct? I think that's right. And sometimes we suffer. We suffer sometimes for the cause of Christ, but sometimes we suffer because we make wrong decisions. Don't we? It says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable. Now, wait a minute. Come on, Lord, that don't like that word to his death. I struggled with that for months. What does that mean for Daryl to be con made conformable unto his death? I mean, I'm not looking for the nearest tree to be hung on. And this is what the spirit spoke to me many years ago. Just as he died for sin, I want you to die to sin and become more like me. You see, he wasn't asking me to go to a tree. He wasn't asking me to, to get hung up by my heel somewhere. He wasn't asking me to get stoned. He was just asking me to let that healing power. Purify my life and to make me conformable unto his death because he died for sin that I could die to sin. Can you say amen? 
And I'm going to be the first one to tell you, Daryl Schmidt is a long ways from being perfect. But I'll be the first one to tell you, Daryl Schmidt has come a long ways in the last 25 years. Amen. Quiet, Ray. <laughs> By the way, some of you may or may not know this. Ray was in the Smith Center National Guard at the same time I was in the Phillipsburg National Guard. And we went to Savannah, Illinois, four summers in a row. And I happened to be driving a five-ton. And Ray was in the back of a, I don't know how many times you rode in my truck particularly, but too many. I heard that. So Ray and I are, are, are friends from way back. And Ray will be the first to tell you that God done something in my life. Can I tell you? I still remember the day that the Lord directed me to these two portions of Scripture. And he said, Daryl, this is what I want you to become. He said, call unto me, and I'll answer you, and I'll show you things beyond your wildest dream and expectation, great and mighty things that you don't even know about. How many of you have, has God done things that you couldn't imagine? All of us at some time or another that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. I'm still working on that one. It's been a lot of years, 20-some, 20 20-plus, 20 and God's still working on me. I said, God is still working on me. Okay, third time, God's still working on me. Is he working on you? We need to be spending time in prayer with God. We need to be spending time in prayer with God. The cows will take care of themselves for 15 minutes. The job will wait. You can get up five minutes early or go to work, go to pray afterwards, after you get out of work. We can make time. And it'll pay great dividends every time we do. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and we love you this evening. I thank you for the message that you gave me. I, I, I still am in awe that 20 plus years, and this has been my favorite portion of Scripture, never once have I stepped to the pulpit and, and shared what you have taught me through this. And knowing this evening, Lord, that it was just a small portion of what you really have and have done in my life and through my life with these Scriptures. I pray, Lord, that before each and every one of us leave here tonight, that we spend time with you and that we allow you to work in our lives as well. In Jesus' name. Would you stand with me this evening? We're not going to ask anyone to come to the piano this evening. The music is going to start playing. Jake promised me he wouldn't play Wipeout. And we're going to just come and spend some time in prayer tonight. Can I tell you? I didn't have any trouble finding time to spend in prayer when I was pastoring. I came out to the church every morning at 7 o'clock or before, and, and I just automatically, I read my devotions, and then I automatically came into the sanctuary and spent time with the Lord. That was just my routine. But now that I'm not an active pastor anymore, I go into my office and I listen to the scriptures on technology and I read my little four devotions and I breathe a little prayer saying, Lord, thank you for the scriptures and thank you for what you're doing in my life. Take care of me. Goodbye. I don't spend near as much time in prayer as I used to. And can I tell you something? The Lord's still working on me. He's still dealing with Daryl. 
I don't have an excuse. I don't even really have a reason most of the time. I just need to spend more time with him. The old chorus says, shut in with God in a secret place. There in his presence, beholding his face. Gaining new power to run in the race. How I long to be shut in with God. I want us to come this evening and shut ourselves in with God. There's no hurry. You've got all kinds of time. It's 20 minutes till 7. So you've got at least 45 minutes. And I want us just to come and find a place to pray. Get serious with God. He wants to talk to you tonight.